Let's go over the components we'll be installing. First, we have the drives. We'll be installing a SATA solid state drive and a SATA hard drive, each with connections for data and power cables. A SATA DVD recordable drive with connections for data and power cables. Two PCI Express 3.0 16x video cards. A PCI wireless network card and a PCI Express 1X sound card, two 4GB DDR3 RAM sticks, processor with heatsink and fan, the motherboard, the computer's case, the power supply, SATA data cables for the SSD, hard drive, and DVD recordable drive, a power strip with surge protection, the tools we'll need, a Phillips, or plus screwdriver, a flathead or minus screwdriver, a power screwdriver is optional, needle nose pliers for getting into tight spaces or to retrieve dropped screws, and a parts container to hold the small screws while we're working and to store extras. When using a power screwdriver, be careful not to over tighten the screws. It's easy to strip the threads, which can ruin the part. If you do strip the threads, try using another screw with bigger threads in the hole. To reduce the likelihood of this happening, hold the power driver very loosely, so when the screw is tight, the driver will slip in your hand. Under no circumstances, use a power drill with a screwdriver adapter. We'll be putting together a mid-tower computer, which is the most popular case type, since installing parts is a little different in every case. We will show several cases throughout the installation lessons. Let's remove the case cover. Most case covers are held in by screws, two or three per side. Some cases come with thumb screws, and you can remove them with your fingers, or a power screwdriver. To remove the case sides, simply pull back and to the side. On this case, there are no screws holding the side covers on. Instead, there are release buttons, and the sides come off. Inside the case, you'll find bags of screws. You can use the parts container to separate the different sizes and types of screws to make finding them later a little easier. There are two basic types of screws, screws with little threads and screws with big threads. The screws with little threads are used on DVD and Blu-ray drives. The screws with big threads are used on the motherboard, hard drives, and add-on cards. There are exceptions, but the general rule is if a screw doesn't fit in a hole, try the other kind. If your case came with the power supply, the cables might be hanging down and might get in the way. If this is the case, you can remove the power supply. It is held in by four screws on the back of the case. Be sure to hold the power supply as you remove the last screw. We will reinstall it in Lesson 9. Inside the case, we have space to install the motherboard, three and a half inch bays for the hard drives, and five and a quarter inch bays to install DVD and Blu-ray drives. There are several cables coming from the front panel that control the power and reset buttons and also light up the power and hard drive activity lights. Some cases also come with cables for a sleep button and case speaker. There are USB and audio cables coming from the front panel as well. We will connect these cables to the motherboard in Lesson 3. In Lesson 2, we'll show how to install the memory sticks and both Intel and AMD processors onto their motherboards.